Welcome to Coach's Interviews, everybody. I'm Jim, and uh, I'm here with our coach, Kyle Sello. Hello, everyone. He coaches the Majins, the Marker Man, the M on his head, man. Uh, yes. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk about your team. So, start off with the first question. What do you think is your team's greatest weakness? Or who do you think is your team's greatest weakness? Well, our team's greatest weakness is probably Bobbity because, uh, I mean, he has a lot of good stuff, but he's got innate defense negatives to him. So, no matter what we do, we're taking more damage than anyone else on our team, which makes it a lot harder to deal with them. Yeah. Um, there has been a bit of a talk uh, that the new difficulty messes up spammers a little more. Do you think that's affected him as well and made him a little less effective than last season, or is it basically the same issue as last season? Um, I think basic. I, I think actually he uses his P2s a little more. Uh, Bobby, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, and I think he uses his P2s a little more. It just, um, what's going on? He does not seem as willing to use his ultimate like he did. Yeah. You know, it, it's more Pui Pui next power than, you know, the, yeah, him the, killing all of Rugrats with like five sniping alts. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that was amazing. I still <laughs> love it. My favorite uh, Bobbity moment. All right, well, uh, let's go on to the next question. Then, what's your goal for the season? So, some teams want to win the bowl; other teams just want to get a certain record and into a certain division. What about you? Uh, well, right now, I want to get a friggin' win. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good goal. Um, I mean, ultimately, I'd like to finally, if not win the bowl, to at least get to it because I've gotten to the to the playoffs. I think every season or most of them. At least, so I'd like to go all the way one of these times. Oh, that's a that's a good goal. That's uh striving a little high. But well, a good, I mean, yeah, no, I'm just saying I, I can't become a staff member. I'm already a coach, so <laughs> you know. Yeah. Just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> um what's the scariest team for you to face? So if there's any like counters they have in specific to your team or whatnot. Scariest team. Uh, I mean, I'm always scared of like the couple, like the boos are always uh, an opponent that I'm always afraid of. Um, especially because they have oobs. So it's like, oh, how, how much better are they doing with the character that is essentially mine? So low competition. <laughs> yeah. And um, I always fear the androids because uh, one of the te things that can really hurt my team is just too much aggression where none of my guys can charge or anything like that. Yeah. So the androids where they just can stay the entire time, really, really scary sometimes. Yeah, terrifying. They just never get out of your face. Um, yeah. All right, well, in a similar light as the last question, what's the hardest team to build for? So some teams like the Boos have power body breakers across the board, and that can cause some teams issues. Or uh, the androids you need, if you're on their map, you need to... Be a little more cautious with your spammers, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Which team do you think is the most difficult? Um, I'm trying to think. Well, I think one of the teams that's really difficult is actually uh, Muscle, because mm -hmm. with all their transformations, their characters each do something different. It's it's a lot easier to build a team where it's like, oh, well, like ninety percent of their guys are melee, so I can just focus on defending melee. Yeah. But a lot of the guys on Muscle are, are really different, and their characters are strong. And they change as they transform. Quite a exactly. Bit. <laughs> Quite a bit. Yeah, especially Broly, who's uh -huh. you know, starting on base now, and as he just transforms, he gets scarier and scarier. <sighs> Terrifying. Um, let's go on to the next question. What made you want to be a part of this league, and why did you become a coach? Oh, God. Uh, let's see. I came into the league... Oh, God, I want to say during season three? Something like that. Uh, a couple of my friends were coaches. Uh, Snowy was coach of uh, Valkyries. Sparta was coach of Majins. And then uh, I believe not long after I joined in, Derangel became coach of the Blades. Um, and so, I, you know, they, they were having a lot of fun doing it. And I was having fun getting to the league. And I actually started in the minors as a coach. Oh. I, I did that for two seasons, one the second season. And after that, I wanted to become a full-time coach. Um, and then it, at that time, the Ginyu Force actually had no opening because their coach was, kind of fell out of love with the Ginyus. 
So, I mean, it just it worked out. But, I, I mean, the big thing was a lot of my friends were doing it. I really like to get in on it. I, I like the whole uh, join the minors, go one season of the minors, go second season, win, and then automatically go. I, I'm I'm ready. Yeah. It's like Thank a God nice, easy transition. Yeah, PyCon was the main reason I won that season. <laughs> Because uh, it was Pycon, Bobbity, and Dodoria. I remember people being terrified of him uh, joining the majors because of what happened in the minors. Yeah, not so much. And yeah, not not anymore. Um, let's go on to the next question. What do you think is the most interesting part of the league? What is and what is the most frustrating for you? Uh, well, the most frustrating is definitely uh, the inconsistency of characters. Oh yeah, because because there are some weeks like. It, like uh, Bojack last season is a perfect example. That build he was on for like, what, 11 weeks? He was amazing with it. Yeah, like, and then just whatever. all of a sudden just starts doing nothing. Or not not nothing, but not nearly as well as he had been. Yeah, because he got like two or three elites out of that, didn't he? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. and it, I think one of them he got really early on. Oh, yeah. But like it just, it's that, it, for some reason, it's an evolving game where you got to keep tweaking things and it's never... Never the same, but that's also what I like the most about it is that it's evolving. For some reason, you know, there's always something different that you have to tweak. It's never just, oh, I'll just do the same build, same lineup, everything's good, can't be beat. Uh, a little more strategy than just this build worked. Let's throw it out there. Exactly, and that and that helps keep people interested. It's not just the same, yeah, you know, yeah. process over and over. It's more like a real sports league. Exactly. Um, in the off season, most of your free agent testing was based on big garlic junior, but after about two weeks in the preseason, you started using small garlic junior, and yes. it looks like you ultimately decided to go with him. What was with the sun change, and what caused it? Uh, the big form was too slow. For whatever reason, in the tests, it didn't seem to be bad. And Test he was... Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. And it just, uh, especially against the androids, when he fought against Baby and got, it was just uh, the big form. While it has a lot of good stuff, is just too slow, and the Macchio Star wasn't enough to offset all of his dispatches. So that's why we uh, not only put Garlic Junior in, but we also put the limiter on him so that you know we could still have eternal life. He can have all sorts of stuff on him. Yeah, that's a that's a big big bonus there. Eternal yeah, exactly. life use. Um, I, I will say the, the slow melee, the speed of your melee cannot be undermined on a character. Yeah. It, it makes such yeah. a big difference in a fight, considering they're meleeing the majority of the fight. Exactly. Unless yeah. it's Dodoria, who for some reason is still really good with his slow melee. I'm going to share a little insight. I don't know why this is, I don't know how the game works 100% in terms of melee. But when I saw Dodoria punching away at Scatter, who has faster melee, and they were both punching and, you know, had the, the smashing animation where no one was getting knocked back because it was right. simultaneous, Dodoria ended up winning in the end. So I'm not sure what that's about, but that's probably why her, his, its melee's somewhat better. I'm not really sure what's going on with the game. I don't know what the game chooses for that sort of stuff. It's clearly not right. speed in that department, though. Yeah, yeah. No, but but especially for Garlic, because his, his grab wind oh, up is long. That is just a big hit me sign on him. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the Majins are pretty well known for the power body Spopovich, which in many eyes is very questionable, seeing how it's a tool that gets countered quite often. Why is why are you so persistent with the use of Spopovich on uh -huh. body? Well, it, it was just, uh, what's it called? One of the things, for, when we were doing in tests, it had shown a lot of promise. But actually, starting this week, week four, we actually took him off of Power Body. Yay! <laughs> so he is on a uh, major tank build right now. Is uh, it an Eternal Life build? I haven't checked. Yeah. Oh, it's an Eternal Life build, yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Here, let me pull it up real quick. It because I know it's got eternal life. I just can't remember which defense batar I used. It was eternal life. Defense plus three, attack minus one, charged attack. 
Uh, okay, now I have to. This is personally. This is just me. Why charge attack? I I get that he smashes a lot. I get that, but I like I. The, the, the rush attacks always seem to come in far more numerous amounts. Well, uh, Spope, I mean, usually I would agree, but Spopovich, especially out of everyone on my team, just loves doing the charge attacks. Like, I, I, you know, the back fist, the smashes, all those kind of things. And, I mean, the other thing is, I, I was just, I'm running out of Pitaris. other Pitaris. Okay. Right. And I, I didn't want to use Master Strike because I don't like his super getting He, uh, he does uh, use the lower. B2s at, at good times. Or exactly. At least he did last season, from what I remember. Exactly, especially with the like, Crush... Uh, yeah, the uh, the crush one. Yeah, no, that's fair. Fair enough. Um, let's move on to the next question then. What is the fa your favorite part of the league other than the actual matches themselves? Oh God, the favorite part of the league. It, it's probably the community. Honestly, it's it's we have such a nice community, and in the God, however many years we've I've been doing this, there's only been like. I think three people I can think of that have been like a holes that we've had to get rid of. Other than that, everyone. <laughs> yeah, but but like yeah. everyone else in this league is just it's so nice to interact with people and you know everyone has like a common interest and it's just it, it's it's been a good way to meet people and interact. Yeah, that's uh, especially with the Discord. I, I love that we moved to Discord. It makes everything so much better. Without a doubt. And and the number of people that have been joining seems to have increased tremendously with the link to Discord on on the matches. Oh yeah, uh, I know we have. I don't know exactly how many people. Uh, Definitely over hundred. <laughs> yes, at least over hundred. But uh, let's see. I think I can actually check. Uh, uh we have one hundred forty members. So I mean, some of them are you know just. Naruto League or stuff like that, but right, but it's still a community and all of them talk. Even if it's not Dragon Ball Z League related, everyone talks it, there. Exactly, it's great. Um, let's move on. Alrighty. What teams grab your interest outside of your own team? So, if you were to leave the margins, where would you go? Oh God, if I was to leave the margins, um, I would have said Super Saiyans last, <laughs> but uh, that's not really an option. <laughs> Not anymore. Well, you could. Well, you are staff, so you can help with building <laughs> the gauntlet. <laughs> Te yes, technically, I am one of the few people now that can still build for the Super Saiyans. Hey, you um, got that going. No, uh, probably my two main teams would be uh, because I've always been a huge fan of the Cell Saga. So, since a majority of their team is from that, mm -hmm. that's really interesting to me. And uh, Afterlife, just because they have so many. So many options, and it's just yeah, there's that's, that's a popular so much, choice. Yeah, so much untapped potential on that team since it's their first season. Mm -hmm. It's just there's so much that you could play around with that that it would be interesting to go to them. Yeah, a new sandbox and all that. Exactly. Um, what do you think is the key to victory? So some teams go for a try to balance everything out, spread your patars even. Other teams go for glass cannon. Let's pump all our patars on our best. The rest can take the scraps. What's your format? Um, I, I like to have a bit more of a balance to my team. I try not to do the glass cannon too much because I feel like high risk, high reward in the long run over the course of a whole season isn't worth it. It's good for some clutch matches, but like, I, I feel like that's why you don't see as many style of strong users as you used to. Or, I mean, I, I think Cold did uh, like two people on style of strong for a while, and that's. That's one out. last season as a one out, sort right. of thing. So. But yeah, yeah. I just I, I feel like you kind of want a balanced team where everyone kind of does something different because then it's harder to be built against. Right. Fair. Right. If if you put all your eggs in one basket, someone counters that one character with all the pataras, you might be left out to dry afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. Do you think you are adapting well with the new changes that happened since your first day as a coach in comparison to now, which are a lot of changes since then? <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm adapting a little better now. Uh, I mean, the, every season we've kind of added new things that we've had to 
you know, that, that have gotten thrown at us that have really shaken things up, especially uh, the new difficulty. But I think, you know, it's just one of those things as you're coached the longer, you kind of understand what your characters want to do, what they're supposed to do. And that helps kind of go with the punches on any changes that come in. And like. um, what about the most recent off season? All the changes that happened there. How do you feel about, you know, the, the big ones? Super Saiyans being dropped, Master Blast uh, limiting, uh, Savior being removed from uh, Cutscene Ultimate, that sort of stuff. I think it's really helped to balance things out, really. Um, because what's called getting rid of the Super Saiyans, it was something that we looked into you know, as a staff for a long while because I mean, every season we were just nerfing them more and more and it got to the point where we just couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And now that we've gotten rid of them, it, it, I think all the all, a lot of the matches have been really close. Like, I don't think there's really been a team where it's like, oh yeah, this team's automatically going to win because they're blank. You know, some matches right. there have been. But, well, yeah, there's there's obvious uh, like weaker teams and stronger teams, but I don't think there's a single team that's like this team's gonna go fifteen and zero. Exactly, and you know, like the smaller ones, like Master Blast affected my team a little more because of uh, Majin Vegeta, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm I'm really happy about the Savior one just because <laughs> Team Gohan was just he was Insane. so strong. Yeah, and all like base Goku, you know, if all yeah. of those guys are just so strong with that ultimate that it just it like it doesn't hurt them that much i don't think it just it makes it a little more fair right right i mean because these ultimates are so rare yeah i mean didn't M goku throw like base uh and goku throw like five ultimates in a single match once exactly oh yeah against yeah when when derp finally put him back on that old yeah. like he was just chucking ultimates like crazy <laughs> terrifying sight all right, and um, speaking about your team in specific now, who would you consider out of the characters there to be the mule of your team, the one that does a lot or consistently pulls his weight but doesn't really receive as much credit because he's maybe not sparkling and shiny and like, oh, look at that, he just got a lead. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I mean, it, usually the person that does the most is Deborah, but a lot of people do give him that credit. Uh, I, think, I think one person that really does a lot for the team is Majin Vegeta. Mm -hmm. uh, especially like this season, we've we've made him a lot more consistent. So he's doing on average like almost forty thousand damage each week. You know, um, so I, I but he doesn't explode which is what everyone's <laughs> looking for so i think i think the borer kind of takes a little bit more of the limelight um but you know majin vegeta has been doing he's he's been throwing out more b2s though lately so i think he might start to get some of that the spotlight back yeah yeah he, he's also a vegeta so it's hard to completely count him out exactly yeah there's, there's always that he can be amazing yes yeah. How do you feel about your division and the competition in it? Oh god, um I'm trying to think. My division is let's say West Kai, so I have yeah, Ginyu, Ginyu Namek. Derp, and Namek. Uh it's it's pretty competitive. I mean, yeah, all those teams were in South Kai last season, but you've got Derp that's not only is their team doing well, they've got Nuova Shenron. The Ginyu Force is looking solid, and Namek's been looking pretty good too. Okay. Um or no, they they've probably had the most issues out of those other two teams. But I I mean it's it's a very competitive division and I don't think any of my divisionals will be easy matchups. Uh, I mean if we're looking at last season which is basically the same group of people plus your team now. It was pretty competitive to the point where they all had the same record at the end. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little behind on that, so <laughs> Yeah, uh, a, a tough division indeed. Yeah. Yeah. What record do you think your team will end with this season? So it's still a bit early, but guess basically assume from what you hope and what you've seen. 
Oh, God. I'm 0-3 now. 15-0. Well, that one's already impossible. Disregard the rules. Now, I think... I, I I would be quite happy if I end up with like a nine and six, you know, because I I think that's very doable with my team. I, there's going to be definitely matchups where I I lose. I'm not going to say, oh, I'll go twelve and three and show everyone. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I I think nine and six is what I'm hoping, and mm. you know maybe it'll be lowered to like eight and seven or something when oh, it's, it's all said and done. It's a good like high East guy. Uh, exactly. Potentially North Kai. Uh, uh, I don't think the booze androids are, you know, going to let me in there. I, I'm just saying because last season, I people got in with a 9-6 and six record. It was very close throughout oh. the league. Yeah, it also yeah. helped that we got rid of the team yeah, in the first year. place. Yeah, <laughs> that, that probably did push things up just a tad. It's the only reason I'm not in South Kai. <laughs> You snuck out. Yeah, I, I barely did. Uh, left my team in the dust. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, what sort of coaching style do you have? So some teams, um, they're coached with a very tight schedule. Today we're doing lineups. Tomorrow we're doing builds. The next day we're doing costumes. Other teams, uh, what do you guys want to talk about today? Yeah, I'm... I'm... Definitely more laissez-faire with uh, with my team. I, I I don't even think I could stick to a schedule just because I, I I work, I go to school. You know, Monday is like the only day where I'm not actually doing anything. Uh, um, so I I, I kind of just have it where it's like you know if anyone wants to bring anything up, just you know throw it in. We'll talk about it. You know, I'll, and usually I'm on teams where it's not popular characters as much. Like I was on the Ginyu Force first, so I was by myself for that season or most of it and now uh you know i'm on margins and uh my biggest supporter just actually uh jumped ship to a different team so yeah, yeah I, I technically have other people but it's mostly me yeah that's uh that's a bit rough um i actually about supporters do you i'm assuming you prefer more supporters but is there a point where you're like that's too many supporters because there have been teams where supporters kind of flooded into them such as ed in the past yeah i mean personally i actually prefer less um i'm not i'm not saying people should stop supporting teams uh it's just my personal style i i feel like if you get too many people in there trying to do stuff it kind of can do more harm than good. Uh, but uh, Not enough time to discuss. Uh, maybe not everybody's caught up completely, and it's it could be exactly. a lot of wasted time. Yeah, a lot of waste time, a lot of potential arguments, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, mm. so I mean, credit, credit to the big teams that do manage to do it. You know, all the credit to you guys. Uh, um, as a coach, what was your main objective when you became one was it to make someone on your team much better increase the record go for the ball or uh so what was it basically um trying to remember i think when i got them oh god were they in south kai or north kai when i took them over <laughs> you know i don't remember and but I... those are very big gaps so Yes. Um, no, actually, I think when I took them, they were in South Kai. Okay. So I wanted to get them back to their former... I believe I did get them to North Kai one season. So I think I did that. But the main thing I wanted to do was I just I just, I just wanted to have fun <laughs> and, right. and not have a team with Goldo. <laughs> that's, that's a good goal. Don't get Goldo. Yes. I, th I, think you're, I think you're hitting that goal right now, so... Congratulations. It's, I, I've been hitting that goal for about three or four seasons now. so <laughs> That's worth an applause. Uh, there you go. <laughs> all right. Um, do you have any favorite moments since you became a coach, like a particular match that you were really sad <laughs> to participate in or to watch? I have, I have two matches in particular, and I think I actually know the exact weeks for both of them. 
Okay. Uh, I believe. Oh God, week. I think it was season five, week five. Majins versus Super Saiyans. The Super Saiyans were undefeated at that point, and I believe the Majins were like two and two. And in that match, Majub and Majin Vegeta took out the entire Super Saiyans on one of their strongest lineups. Oh, jeez. So, yeah, Majub, yeah, Majub took out two, and then Majin Vegeta took out two. So that was a great one. And then I believe... Oh, God, it was Season 6. or It's 6 or 7, but it's definitely Week 15, Majin's versus Rugrats, where oh, Bobbity goes okay, to lead. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people love that one. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Those are those two definitely stick out in my head. Yeah. Personally, I don't remember what week. I don't remember what season. All I remember is that <laughs> Majin Vegeta finally exploded in Trunks's face at like the very, very end of the match. To win it. <laughs> it is always fun whenever he explodes. Yeah. Ah, uh, that was great though, because it was so close, and he's like, "I'm gonna explode now." It's like that's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it was such a great way to end it, especially against Trunks. <laughs> yep. All right. And um, do you feel any additional pressure to be successful since you are on the staff for the league? Or it's just like, ah, whatever. I, yeah, I, I don't think there's any pressure. It's just, you know, I, I, I'm just happy to do it. I, I'm In the long run, I don't care if I win or lose. I just... It's a fun just, experience. Exactly. You know, I, I try not to get salty over a loss or anything like that. It's just... It, it, it is what it is. It's computer guy. It's, it's just for, it's for the fun. I did it for the lulls. For the lulls. That's a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on to uh, the, the forums portion. Everybody... Who asked questions on the forums? We're gonna read those out. Well, not everybody or not every question, because a couple of them we're gonna skip, either due to repetition or we feel they're not directed straight at the team or the coach. So, if you don't hear so, it, that's probably one of the reasons. Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. First up is Harame, and she asks, "Can we expect a King Cold versus Maju matchup starting the match like last season?" And is it too much for me to request you spend, Weiss Zenny, to change the map from Dynamic to Penguin Village so that King Cold can show his lovely spouse Penguin Village? Uh, well, I can definitely guarantee that I will not be spending Zenny to change the map. Um, no romantic because... getaway? No, no, that needs to go against my match against Derp, <laughs> okay. uh, which is the week after. Fair enough. Uh, but I... I would, you know, if Cold starts King Cold and promises me that they'll start him, I will start Majub. I'll do it. Hey, yeah. <laughs> that match is never going to end. I'm fine with that. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, let's move on to uh, Sin's questions. Oh, all right. Yeah, several, several <laughs> questions. Um, his first one. What's something you try to stress to your supporters regarding your team? I.e. burn, loan, and squeeze all stress the importance of clash-ups on Yamcha. Uh, I, I think the main thing I probably stress is like not having too many negatives. Because uh, like, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of Master Strike because I feel like that takes away too many options from characters. Right. Um, so one of the thing, one of the things I try to do is make sure that like some way or another my characters are balanced in something. Like uh, like the the defense plus three attack minus one with charged attack. You know the charged attack is trying to make up for the attack minus one. You know uh, Deborah has key plus two, super minus one. He's probably the only one that's like the exception. But like I I try to do something so that there's not massive negatives on my characters and that's what i probably stress the most okay that's good that's a good uh idea keep everybody on a level playing field and just give them small advantages over huge ones and detriments yeah. on top of it uh his second question what in your opinion is an underrated or underused batara if any 
trying to think. I know for the longest time I used to say Dende's wasn't worth it, but god damn, that one is, uh, <laughs> that has quickly become one of my new favorites. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think, because I, I feel like, I feel like most of the good Pataras are, are old and used. Really? You're missing one. Flight. It's not just what, enough. What was that? Flight. <laughs> it it definitely should be on every used. character. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I think the main ones are just sometimes people don't see the use of like, serious or indignation. Like they'll they'll try to go for some two point batar that they don't need as badly, or you know something else to win them. But the, those one point batars can be really really yeah. good, and not just as like. Build fillers. Yeah, stats over health down are those batars are some of the best. Probably the exclusion of land energy, depending on the build. That's my personal exactly. opinion on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, his third question: If you had to swap someone on your team to defense plus one, eternal life, serious fighting spirit, who would it be, and why is it Deborah? And he is joking, apparently. Maybe I'm yeah. not sure. Uh. Uh, I would actually probably put it on Majub, just because of how fast his melee is. If he could just stay in the fight, in the opponent's face, Eternal Life Defense Plus One could be a really, really good build on him. Uh, I wouldn't put on Deborah, because when he after images, his charge rate goes to hell, and he likes to throw B2s, so that would not be the best. Right. Deborah is a very... Very well built character, I believe. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. A pain in melee due to B ones, and a pain in uh, in and the B two fight due to just unbelievable spam. Oh yeah. Yeah. Key yeah. plus two and launches. <laughs> Terrifying. Um, his fourth question: Do you run into a lot of Patar shortages, or do you, or do you have, in your opinion, a varied enough team for it to not be huge? So you sort of. Uh, talked about this with charge attack on Spopovich. Yeah, um, yeah. The big, the big thing I run into is uh, running out of cars because a lot of my guys do have good melee on top of some guys with better B twos. Because um, my favorite melee patar is the quick fast attack, and if I could throw that on everyone, I would throw that on all of my guys. But uh, that, that's that's the patar I run into the most short. Right. Um, his fifth question, save your own self-destructing units, worth the risk or avoid at all costs? Um, I think it's worth the risk depending on your character's B2s, because a lot of times when the character first comes in, if they're self-destructed, they, they will not use their ultimate when they're at full health. It's, you usually only see exploders go, you know, self-destruct on their second bar and down. So I would be more afraid if Majin Vegeta were to tag, come in later, and then, you know, explode. Right. So I, I don't think it's I don't think it's avoid at all costs, but it, it's definitely a risk if they tag. Fair enough. And uh, favorite Aura Patara. Oh God. That's it's just the color changing ones, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh God. Uh, I gotta go green because I'm a Green Lantern fan. So, ah, well, the Sands already have theirs decided at pink. I think. Of course. Oh, of course. Good. Yeah, I had a. Uh, I mean, I had the Lantern cores, my Miners League. So. Oh, uh, that was. I remember that. Yeah, that was that was Pycon, Deborah, yeah, Doria, and Bobbity was yeah. them. I remember seeing that. Um, and he has another set of questions. During team chats, are you the most outspoken one, or do you have a particular supporter who gives you a good feedback and a good back and forth? Well, um, right now, I'm definitely the most outspoken one. Yeah, I think um, we talked about this. But uh, no, when uh, when Kojace was on the team, he was actually really good with... Uh, he, he would actually bring up a lot of stuff. He was great to bounce ideas off of. Um, so I did have a particular supporter who gave good back and forth. But not at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> cold snatched them up. I've been noticing a lot of people transferring to cold. Cold stealing I mean, people. 
they're a good team. They have a good coach, and yeah. you know. Now they're stealing them. Oh, yeah, they yeah, are they're, definitely they're going, stealing. Stealing them at the night, forcing them to say all these things with their account. You know, I wouldn't put it past Army. I wouldn't. <laughs> It, it is. It, you never know. Um, all right. Here's a second question of second group of questions. Who on your team do you think improved the most this season? Might be a little early, but anyway. garlic. Garlic. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, I would kind of like, kind of count that just because we were testing them so much in big form, and uh, going down the little, he did so much better. Yeah, I mean, last season he didn't do anything for your team at all. So, it's uh, yeah, but I think even from muscle, I think he's been better. Oh yeah, yeah, no, um, I think it's probably one of the reasons they dropped him. Yeah, and I mean, I I think one of the things with muscle is their guys kind of have to transform. Yeah. So he kind of can't match the same potential just because of uh, better fit that. on a different team. Yeah. yeah. Um. Let's. Let, we're gonna skip one of the questions due to it being a repeat. Uh, has Bobby taken a hurting from the new difficulty like so many other poster boys for spammers, or, uh-huh. or is he doing better than most due to clash ups and he believes honestly underrated melee. Um, I think Bobby has has gotten better. It's just. So is everyone else in the league, kind of. So well, it's relative just... to the rest of the league. Exactly. I mean, he's definitely good. We were thinking about putting him in for the main season. I just think the rest of my team is kind of a Love little it. above him. Yeah. That's that's a fair assessment. Um, he believes that Spopovich has a lot of potential and a fantastic kit. But I know there are people who don't think so. So where do you stand having worked with him every day for a while now? Do you think uh, Spopovich is a natural advantage or disadvantage, to put it plainly? I, I love Spopovich, actually. Uh, I think he's really good. And he may not be the flashiest character. He definitely is one of the most consistent. Uh, because I believe last season he was doing pretty much a character's worth almost every other week. He was the best character for a while, I think, actually. Um, so I, I definitely don't think he's a disadvantage on my team. Uh, if anyone is, it's just Bobbity. Yeah. Um, I will say about Spovovich, my favorite thing with him, which also mm-hmm. coincides with Bobbity, is that the, they have a actual teamwork aspect to where Spovovich alt affects Bobbity's alt. And I love that. There's no oh, team that me. works like that. Oh, trust me. I love that too. But it doesn't in, really help that much, but I, I just love I, the idea. I don't think I have gotten that combo to go off one single time in four, you know, four seasons of coaching this team. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I mean, I would love it. And it's been, there's been set up for it. And I think it even like happened, but the ultimate from Bob missed. missed. Yeah. No, it, it, that, it did miss. I remember. Yeah. Um, I just love the fact that there's a team that actually has a tag team attack. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I think that's an, a, a great thing that they put into the game. I yeah. just I it wish it was feels more like the utilized. theme is a real thing in the game. It's awesome. Exa- exactly. Yeah. Anyway, that is uh, it for this coach interview, uh, except I forgot one question. <laughs> <laughs> a, a final question I ask everybody. Do you have any message for anyone who's undecided, who is looking for to join a team, or just recently joined the forums? Um, I think, you know, if, if you're just joining, I think, I know it can be a little intimidating seeing all these teams and people that already know the league, but I don't think you should get discouraged. You know, all the, a lot of the people in this league are really nice and are more than willing to help new people learn the ropes and how certain things work. So just go for a team that you like the characters or you like the people even that you're working with and you know just ultimately try to have fun uh, i think if if you think of it more as some fun than something competitive you'll get a lot more out of this league every single one of you coaches keeps on giving a humble nice answer and i'm here like <laughs> plug yourselves okay <laughs> <laughs> that that's it for this coach 
coaches interview uh, for real this time. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, we have the thread that will be linked. And if you have any comments there as well or in the comments. And if you want to bitch at us for anything we said, uh, same places. We'll probably do another one in a week or two and we'll uh, put up who it is on the forums and in the Discord. That's everything. Bye-bye. See ya.